A new Titan Quest 2 update has dropped. The April update has the title The Ichthians and Titan Quest 2. Stay tuned for an in-depth analysis of it. This month we get a look into one of the monster types of the upcoming game. This monthly announcement includes one artwork, two concept arts, two in-game screenshots and three GIFs, as well as explanatory texts. The devlog starts out with describing how the human civilization has to face all manner of monsters and mythological beasts. Some of them will act independently, but others will fight in factions and have their own combat doctrine. This is interesting, because this means it's a change from Titan Quest 1. Here the enemies didn't have a specific doctrine when fighting you, they just were programmed to attack you when you went too close. There were some specific fighter roles set in for the monsters, but they did not adapt to changing situations and always just did their normal attack patterns. The Ichthians are a monstrous hybrid of human and sea monster. They are a well-known enemy type of Titan Quest 1. Here we encountered them in many different acts, where they had different appearances and skills depending on the act. The first image is a good looking artwork showing the hideout of the Ichthians which is built on the seaside which makes sense. It makes you wonder, do these monsters live on land or underwater most of the time? The text says, the Ichthians are able to fight on land, though they do not like to stray far from the water. In any case, the structure looks primitively built and a bit menacing. You wouldn't want to go swimming there, considering some fishman monsters would surround you at any minute. The second image is a screenshot of in-game graphics. It shows an Ichthian base camp with four new types of Ichthians, which we will come to in a bit. The graphics look good and make me wonder how the gameplay will feel. The next portion of the devlog explains how the developers were aiming to give the reader an idea of the combat for the upcoming game. Then it says, Naturally, we are also working towards real gameplay demonstrations, though the game will need some more time in the oven before that. This means that the game is still in a relatively early stage of development. With that, my prediction that the game will come out in May 2024 is off the table. This is a bit disappointing to hear, because as a Titan Quest 1 aficionado, I anticipated the game and I hoped that it would come out rather sooner than later. Learning that the game needs more time in the oven makes me think that my estimate of the game's release has to be postponed for 3 to 4 months. So let's hope I'm wrong and that the game will come out before August or September 2024. After that shock, we get some very interesting images. In the earlier announcements, we only got texts, artworks and in-game graphics. Now we get a couple of GIFs, which give a good idea of what the Ichthian monsters will look like, as well as their roles and abilities. The first GIF shows the most basic Ichthian enemy, which will probably be the fodder soldier of the Ichthian faction. The devlog mentions that the spear can be used for melee attacks, but it also can be thrown. Enemies throwing a spear is something completely new for the Titan Quest universe. In TQ1, only melee spear attacks were possible. It will be interesting whether the Ichthians have to retrieve their thrown spear, or if they can just throw an infinite number of spears. The next GIF shows the sorcerer of the Ichthians, which is called Enchanter here. The role of this monster type is to heal their allies, but their healing spell on a single target also buffs it by increasing their speed and damage. The beam also heals themselves, so it will be imperative to take out this healer first, as it is the case in many other games. The next GIF shows the enemy type Ichthian Hunter. The design reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean, specifically of the Hammerhead dude. The text says that the hunter will attack with a spear and his ability is pinning down the player with a net, then rapidly closing the distance to go in for attacks. The net is also present in Titan Quest 1, where the Ichthians of Act 5 and 6 use nets frequently to make the player immobile and decreasing their defensive ability briefly, which makes them more vulnerable to a critical hit. It's hard to decide which Ichthian looks more menacing, the hunter or the next one, the brute. This enemy type seems to be one of the strongest Ichthians, 
because the devlog explains how the brute attacks with a heavy mace, but the brute also has two abilities, a dash attack and a ground slam attack. I love the dash attack of some masteries in Titan Quest 1. This makes it easy to pick off key targets like healers or sorcerers first. Seeing that even enemies of Titan Quest 2 have a dash attack basically guarantees that there will be some dash attacks available to the player in some masteries, which I am a big fan of. The devlog continues by describing that the Ichthian faction was designed to put together effective squads, with the different enemy types working together to cover their respective weaknesses. The developers aim to keep the combat engaging, challenging and fresh, which sounds awesome. The next image is also an in-game graphics, showing four of the newly introduced enemy types. The troopers, a hunter, an enchanter and two brutes. The brutes seem to be other models than in the gif. In this picture there seem to be boar men used as placeholders, but they were given 18 weapons. The devlog goes on by describing how to combat this group of enemies. Will you go for the fodder first or take out the healer? It certainly would be a bad idea to fight the brutes first, because this will take the longest and all the other enemies can get in many free hits in that time. The log continues by stating that different hero builds such as melee or ranged fighters will approach every enemy group differently, keeping the combat experience fresh. The text mentions a reflect build, which is interesting. There were strong reflect builds in Titan Quest 1 already, so we can look forward to that. We can assume that a combination of reflect damage gear and the utilization of the right reflect skills can make a good reflect build. The next image shows 3D weapon models of the Ichthian faction. In the GIFs we saw only the sorcerer staff, the other one, like the shield or the sword, were not used in any GIFs. The variety of weapons will make fighting the Ichthians more interesting. It would be a bit boring if each Ichthian had the same weapon set all the time. The last image is a concept art of the Ichthians. This gives an interesting peek into the faction, because the saucer in the middle was not described earlier, but in this image we can recognize him. The Ichthian on the left was also not shown but it seems likely that we won't encounter the left one in the upcoming game, because the design looks very familiar to the Ichthians of Titan Quest 1. This design has probably been scrapped. All in all, this update gives us a better understanding of when the game will come out, and it also gives us a better idea of the combat. Battling different factions, where each individual has unique abilities and roles, will make the combat interesting requiring strategies that you can change on the fly. After looking over this update, I'm looking forward even more to the game now, but it seems likely that the game will not come out next month as I predicted in my first video. This is a bit disillusioning, but I would rather have a good and finished game later than having a buggy mess released sooner. Tell me what you think about that and subscribe for the best starting quest news. As soon as the game comes out, I will provide game mechanic and item explanations as well as hero build ideas. If you are interested in that, subscribe to this channel and like the video if you thought my review was good. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on my channel as well as in-game in Hazardous 2. Bye!